Welcome to Bunny Hugs and Mental Health, the podcast that deals with all things mental health. We talk to professionals, survivors, and loved ones about their sometimes informative, sometimes uplifting, and sometimes tragic stories. I'm your host of the show, Todd Rennebaum, advocate, recovering addict, experienced sufferer of depression and anxiety, and author of the children's book, Sometimes Daddy Cries. Hello and welcome to another episode of Bunny Hugs and Mental Health here on the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. I am Todd Rennebaum. Boy, do I have another wonderful episode for you this week. This week I'm speaking with Dina Al and she is a a life coach and and a good friend of mine. We've done quite a few uh, Instagram lives together talking about different mental health things and whatnot. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about thriving and surviving what the differences are what they look like and then you can kind of assess yourself and see where about you are on the spectrum between uh, surviving and thriving but first i want to tell you about a couple upcoming episodes Uh, last year for pride month i spoke with a young lady who just came out as trans and she it was she was just as she i believe what she said was she was a little baby trans um because she was she literally had just come out maybe a few weeks before uh so now i'm catching up with her a year later what has it been like uh living a year as as a woman and she's uh she yeah we talk about all types of stuff um and mental health challenges and whatnot so her name is juniper stay tuned for that uh and then i also have a an amazing guest named dr gand i believe I'll double check on that, but uh, he is a doctor from Toronto and he is very involved with MAID, which is the Medically Assistance Assistance in Death. So that's uh, kind of like a medically assisted suicides, but it's not called suicide. It is called medically assisted in death. Uh, and there's a Canadian law that should come into effect in 2023 uh, where, you know, you're able to do this but not only for physical but also mental health reasons you can choose to be medically assisted in death Uh, we talk about that we talk about the the controversy behind that and what that means for for people with mental illness when it becomes an option so on and so forth uh it's pretty controversial now let me tell you about a wonderful podcast that i have been listening to it's called the sober story and it is with host Emily. And there's a powerful story behind each person's journey to sobriety. Join Emily each week to hear the stories of people from all different walks of life as they share how they became sober. It's a wonderful podcast with a wonderful host, hostess, whatever. And uh, check that out. You should listen to that podcast. Another wonderful podcast you should check out is the Rainy Days podcast. You may have heard of this one. I talked to the host, Jason, uh, last week. No, two weeks ago. Doesn't matter. I talked to Jason uh, a little while back. And uh, yeah, check out his podcast, The Rainy Days Podcast, where he aims to discuss and explore mental health unapologetically through sharing lived experiences and projects centered around mental health and well-being. I highly suggest you listen to it. Jason's a great host, a great guy. And he has a great story himself. So check out Rainy Days Podcast. And once you check out those podcasts, rate and review them. And rate and review this podcast if you haven't already. Uh, it's it's very important for podcasts to, to, to get rates, ratings and reviews. And uh, we always appreciate hearing from you and uh, seeing ratings. So please do that. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Bunny Hugs Podcast and on TikTok, Bunny Hugs Podcast, Bunny Hugs and Mental Health on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, enough about that stuff. Now, I want you to listen to Dina and thriving and surviving and the differences and whatnot. So, without further ado, I give you my good friend, Dina. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. And an honor. And, uh, and an honor. Oh, good. 
So what I do is I essentially help people become the best them that they could be. I coach them with their mindset and their life. And it's what I do is help them look forward and look at their future in a way that they have never seen before and to experience it within the realm of ideally thriving. So today we are going to be discussing the differences between surviving and thriving and the signs that you are in either or. And uh, we talked about this once before in a live. And you you mentioned then that you can be a little bit in both. You can be in transition where you're kind of, sometimes you're thriving, sometimes you're surviving and depending on the day even yes so it's a spectrum you know you on the right you have thriving and on the left you have surviving it is natural for human beings to be able to live in both the reason why we have a survival mechanism it's an evolution it's an evolution there's an evolutionary basis to it however the issue isn't with being in survival the issue is being stuck and survival, and the long-term effects that that has upon a human being, on their mind, on their body, and on their consciousness. That is what I like to help people go through. So we're going to discuss a bit about what it means to be stuck in survival and what that does to you. So When it comes to, let's discuss the motivation that comes with being in survival mode. It's usually coming from a negative perspective in the sense of you are, your motivation is to avoid something or out of fear of something or out of anxiety of something. There's something negative that's pushing you away from doing what you're doing. If you are, let's just say, in a state of danger, that's not. That's natural. However, if you're navigating in your day-to-day where you're actually safe and sound, yet you still feel as though you're not safe and sound, that's where the issue arises. Mm -hmm. In terms of, let's just discuss someone that has gone through therapy, they've gone through the work, you know, they did the inner healing. A lot of times, they don't know how to thrive especially if they grew up and let's just say in a disenfranchised household or in a marginalized community or whatever it may be, those circumstances and those around them, their parents, their ancestors, whatever it may be, if they were in survival mode and they brought that on, then they grew up only knowing that they only know how to navigate within that premise. So, it's really important for some people to learn what it means to thrive and to have that become them and become a part of their day-to-day life. Hmm. So we help them recognize where they are and then to help them move more towards the thriving. Because I'm assuming exactly. most people that are thriving wouldn't seek out uh, a life coach anyway. Or would they? They, they actually would they have because mm. they want to thrive even further right and they right. want to go even further however they are content with what's happening see when you're thriving it's not as though there are no issues or no problems there's that toxic positivity aspect isn't there because you're still going to go through hardships you're still going to go through negativity but it's how you view them how you deal with them, how you view the past. You look at your obstacles, you look at everything that you've gone through, and you're able to look at it with distance and gratitude. I understand why that happened. It was terrible. However, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I came out of it, and I'm anti-fragile. Faja? Anti-fragile. Say that again. <laughs> Anti-fragile. Like, fragile. You know how oh, oh. Fragile. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. So. I, I don't like- know why I didn't understand that word for a second. <laughs> 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 Sorry. 
<laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's the Zoom audio, which is still pretty good. It's pretty good, but it's, yeah. I'm like, Fraja? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, anti-fragile. Yes. So, uh, someone actually taught me this. As human beings, we are anti-fragile. So let's just take this glass. This is a glass. It's fragile. So the more impact it goes through, the more it will shatter and shatter until it breaks. As human beings, we are anti-fragile. It's like your heart. You train it, you train it, you train it. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So the more impacts that we go through, you know that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Mm -hmm. But you, you can't really say that to someone who's in survival mode. That's insulting. They are going, like, they're going through a lot, you know? But when you're telling someone that when they're thriving and they're looking at their past, they're able to go like, yes. I, I understand where you're coming from. And that's perceiving the past, perceiving the future and anticipating the future rather than viewing it with anxiety and fear. <laughs> <laughs> you view it with ease and anticipation and you look forward to the future and you know that there are going to be obstacles. You know that there are going to be hardships, but that's not an issue because you're okay and you know that you'll be okay no matter what. Hmm. Plus meds. Plus meds. <laughs> Under medical supervision, please. <laughs> right. Right. Let's discuss a survival and what it, the effects that it has, you know, in the men like in your mind in your body and with your conscientious levels so with your mind in terms of like mindset you know it comes from more of a scarcity again we said fear you you don't feel like things are enough you feel like you're in that panic mode your amygdala is going on overdrive it's a lot is happening so when that's when your amygdala is sending these signals to your body that you're not safe, what happens to your body is that your sympathetic nervous system starts to go on overdrive. So instead of having a balance between your parasympathetic, your rest, and your sympathetic, your go, you're constantly on your sympathetic nervous system. And there is a disbalance between the two. Your body isn't resting. You're not really relaxing. And even when you want to be relaxing, you're not because you're in survival mode. You don't feel safe. You don't feel secure. You're navigating the world out of fear and avoidance. So how could you rest? And that tends to have a physiological effects on the body. Inflammation, the stress response, higher cortisol levels. Diarrhea? And then I'm not really sure about that, but I'm sure it can mess. It messes up your digestive system because you can't digest food properly. Damn it. I thought you were just going to say yes. Cause <laughs> it happens to me sometimes. So anyway, I share too much. I'll cut this out. <laughs> but that would make sense though. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, it makes uh, sense. Okay, good. So I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so your conscientious levels, you know, your energy levels, they're there, you're wired and tired at the same time, you're, you're not balanced. So in survival mode, when you're stuck in it, there is this off balance. Now let's talk about how that could play out in your day to day life. So when you're in survival mode, you can't make any mistakes, you are, you could be a perfectionist, you feel like Everything has to be put in order. Another symptom could be all or nothing thinking, black or white thinking. You either love things or hate them. And this could go towards other humans as well. And your day-to-day -day relationships, you know, you fluctuate between absolutely loving someone to absolutely hating them. And where there is love, there is hate. And where there is hate, there is love. This all sounds familiar. Not, not, well, I mean, we talked about it. I, I don't mean familiar that way, but familiar that 
I've lived this. <laughs> it resonates. Yes, yes. I, I can, uh, I relate. That's what I was trying to say. You relate. Hypervigilance. And this is where I want to create a clear district distinction between being in the present moment, which is thriving. You're present, you're mindful, you see things for what they are. And then there's hypervigilance that's happening while you're in survival. You're on edge, you're looking right, you're looking left. And this could be linked to the fight response. Anything could put you off. Someone could be breathing the wrong way and it could trigger you because you're, you're on edge. You don't know what's going to happen. Danger could come at any moment. You need to stay safe. Perpetual shame and self-loathing. Oh, I'm such an idiot when I do that. Kindness. <laughs> Kindness. Kindness. All right. Again, it goes back to that whole notion of you can't make mistakes. So when you make mistakes or you do something stupid, you're like, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Going on to our next point, perpetual overthinking, worrying, and looping. Your mind is going on and on and on. And it's not progressing forward. It's not as though you're constructively thinking. You're just stuck in a mental loop. You're talking very gently today. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your life coach voice? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's, let's turn down the desk a little okay, bit. <laughs> okay. It's two hours later there than here. So, okay. I'll be a smart ass gently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having a case of the should have should have would have could have and again it not being constructive using that as a means of beating yourself up should have done that i should well, i should not have said that why did i do that and then linking that back to the overthinking the looping mm -hmm. i'll do that with other people even and I think that's why I quit a lot of jobs. It's like, oh, management should have done this or the, you know, the director of the place I'm working should have done this and should have done that. And like, so my perfectionism and my should have's will even spill over into other people. Then it's like, I can't work here because they're not doing it right. And, and they should have seen this coming and stuff like that. The, the projection of that and the externalization of it. Mm-hmm. But also maybe they should have been able to, but also maybe they could have just been lousy. <laughs> and, <laughs> maybe. In all honesty. <laughs> maybe, but it's like every job I have, I'm like that. And it's like, oh, I quit. I can't sign it here. And then that's why I have a different job like every year and a half. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe, 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 okay. Maybe that's not a survival thing. Maybe I'm just have high expectations of others. Also, there's the ADHD element. <laughs> We cannot neglect that. <laughs> I'm not diagnosed <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Keyword. Yet. Uh, I am seeing an ADHD coach now, though. How's it going? Um, sorry. <laughs> I totally changed subjects there. <laughs> it's going ADHD. well. ADHD. It's going well. <laughs> it's going well. She's a really nice person, and yeah, we get along really well. Because why wouldn't we? I'm charming as hell. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. Anyway, surviving. Uh, to the next point, inter over productivity, doing things for the sake of doing things. Being a busyholic. Because you feel like if you're not doing something, something could come to you. So you just want to be one step ahead. But are you really doing something? That's the question. Are you doing for the sake of doing or are you doing for the sake of actually like getting things done? Right. Yeah. Which could also be an ADHD thing, maybe. Also could be. They're 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 again, you know, overlap. this I, I wouldn't say necessarily overlap. I would say that these are signs, you know, at the end of the day. This isn't a hundred percent, but if you're going through this and you're like, check, 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 
maybe you should reconsider and look in and be like, hmm, how do I think about things? How do I perceive the world? How's my body? How's my mind? How are my energy levels? So on to the next point. Okay. Not feeling like you are good enough or that you are enough. Hmm. You don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you're enough. You just feel like you're perpetually doing and doing and just there's again linking that back to that scarcity that lack that <sighs> it's hard to be grateful and gracious when you don't feel like anything is enough mm. mm -hmm. catastrophization mm. something small could feel huge it could be like your world is shutting down and everything is going to be over and your life is ruined and it's a horrible feeling it is an absolutely horrible feeling but again when you're in survival mode you're primed to think of the worst because with catastrophization the other symptom is actually like negative thinking and being in a negative loop inside your head and studies have shown is that when you are in a state of negativity you become negatively primed so you're more likely to pick up negative things in the environment so you just start to see the worst mm -hmm. so you can have the, goes, you could be in the exact same situation as another person and they see it as just fine but it, it, it's the per perspective that you guys are having on I wouldn't say attitude is more the perspective in the way. You, mm -hmm. you're right. Okay. The so way you'd be you like, oh, it's it. the worst moment ever. And they're like, no, this is fine. <laughs> that makes perfect sense because at the end of the day, you know, we pick up different sets of information. You and I could be seeing the exact same thing, but you are seeing something and I am seeing something else because we're pro we, we are paying attention to different things. So if you're negatively primed and you're in survival mode, you're being hyper vigilant. You're looking right and left. You're looking for what could harm you. And you're going to look for negativity. And you're going to look for that frown. And you're going to misinterpret that comment. And you're, you're, you're. What's that supposed to mean? What is that supposed to mean? I'm kidding. I was misinterpreting I, your. I know. Your, that was a joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I what an that. idiot. Why would I say that? This is the worst day ever. Sorry, sorry, I'm surviving. Yes. Right <laughs> yeah. And scene. <laughs> anyway. So uh, back to that enoughness. You know, not feeling like things are enough. This could happen with time as well. Time urgency. And you feel like you're running out of time. There isn't enough time. Time is running away from you. Time is fleeing from you. Like the panic. Right performance anxiety and feeling as though you are under attack in your everyday life just in general just as again you're 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 on edge right you're picking up and someone says something as we said you're negatively primed someone says maybe they're having a bad day but when you are in survival and you are or could be triggered and then you know you're going to misinterpret that but when you're thriving and you're in a good place you're, you have that ability to take that distance and be like this isn't personal this isn't about me because most of the time when other people do whatever they do to you it's not personal it's what they have externalized upon you but it's hard to perceive that when you're in a state of survival walking on eggshells hmm, a lot of farmers feeling, do that <laughs> so stupid in our in our life you actually ask me you're like so would someone that's living with someone abusive you know be in survival mode and i told you yes definitely that was a you good know? question that was an excellent question <laughs> constant reassurance is that one <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, we are go maybe, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to thriving. What it yeah. means to Enough thrive. of this negative stuff. What's what's feeling good like? 
what's changing perspectives and actually doing things not out of avoidance, not out of fear, but out of genuine love for yourself. Doing things because you are happy and not even necessarily happy. It's really out of love for yourself. You're doing it out of the goodness for you because that's your motivation. It's a positive it's a positive form of motivation. And here's the thing that's so much easier to be motivated by negative things than it is by positive things, varying mm -hmm. person to person. Mm -hmm. But. Well, even hate is easier than tolerance. You know what I mean? Yeah. For, for other where, people. So, yeah. So where there is hate, there is love. Gotta switch. Gotta switch. If you have the ability to hate yourself, you have the ability to love yourself. So now we're going to look at it in terms of the three, the mind and the body and the consciousness. In terms of the mind, you know, your, your mindset is very abundant. It's really like you look around, you can navigate from a state of more like gratitude. You see, you see the, the, the abundance in your, even if you have very little in your life, you, you can appreciate that very little and see it as not only enough, but more than enough. Mm -hmm. You can appreciate things. Gr gratitude? Gratitude is a big component of it. So your prefrontal cortex is running the show here. You know, it's not your amygdala like in survival where it's like panic. It's your prefrontal cortex. It's you can think. You can actually think there's a good balance. Thriving is all about having balance, healthy balance. Hmm. I, I appreciate yeah. and I'm grateful you, you told me about that just now. I'm thriving now, you see, and seen. <laughs> you are, you are day by day, you are thriving and thriving more and more. And I could not be more proud of you. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Some days it's like two steps forward, one step back. Uh, but I mean, it's not linear, right? It's a little like this. Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. You're still going forward. It's progress, not perfection. Exactly. That's an AA thing for you. Alcoholics knowledge. That, I did not know that. That's very interesting. It's, it's my so, favorite thing from AA. Progress, not perfection. I mean, I forget about it lots, <laughs> but when I remember it, it's like, oh yeah, right. I'm progressing. I'm not perfect, but I'm progressing. You're going and, uh, forward. You're going forward. So in terms of your body, right, because your mind is not in panic mode, you can actually think things through, send signals to your body. You can rest when you need to rest and you can do things when you need to do things. Your sympathetic nervous system is on when it needs to be on, and your parasympathetic system is on when it needs to be on. You can sleep better. You can digest your food better. Your body tends to process things better. You're in a healthier state of being. So and no diarrhea. Less diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. A balance of diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I'm not that sorry, but I am, and I'm not. I'm glad you take this well. <laughs> I find it really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> it's okay. You're letting your inner child be good. Good. <laughs> Oh, man. So your conscientious levels, you know, you feel like you feel balanced as a person. You feel like your energy levels are balanced as well. You feel like there's a flow, there's a flow of information. You feel like there's just a flow within yourself. And in terms of gratitude, you really can be grateful. You can be content. You can be happy. You feel all of these things are not only attainable, but they're actually within reach and you have tapped into them and you can tap into them and knowing that you can. And 
being able to be in a situation, even though it's terrible, and being able to take a step back and see it and go like, this is really bad, but I can take a moment to appreciate it and to reach that level of zen. <laughs> is a goal you know of that let it be i call it um shit tycoon survival so you know (laughs) tycoon survival yes yes tycoon or typhoon oh i think it's typhoon Okay. Yeah, I speak three part. languages. Please excuse me. <laughs> right, right. Okay, and good. So, I'm glad it was, it was on you that time and not me. Faja? Great. Oh, fragile. Great. Right, right. Okay. Fragile. So <laughs> it could be the worst day ever and you still know that you can get through it. It's being able to be in the present moment and... You know, not your thoughts don't control you. You control your thoughts. You are in charge. It doesn't go back and forth and back and forth. Again, you are human. And again, it is a spectrum. There are some days or instances where you might or might not, you know, slip into survival mode. It could happen. You actually could be in survival mode because you really have to survive and something happened. But you can switch back to thrival mode because that's your inherent, like not your inherent, but that's the default mode that you have trained yourself to become. Or you have been raised because if you've been raised around people that have been thriving, you learn how to thrive. Again, being able to stay grounded and anchored within a bad situation. You know, you don't dissociate, you don't check out, you're not triggered. Again, we're going back to that comment of someone does something or says something and you look at them and you're like, okay, I'm not going to take this personally. This is on you. I'm going to distance myself and I'm going to protect myself in that method. And to be able to do that, to be satisfied with yourself and to accept and love yourself for what you are. But I want to like I want to make a specific point about this. It's not saying that you don't want to change something. You could still want to change something. And you could still want to change something about yourself, whether it be physically or mentally or whatever it may be. But yet you still accept yourself for what you are in the present moment. Hmm. And people People are like that. They can do that? Yeah. Huh. Are they superheroes? Yeah. Super they walk amongst us. Wow. <laughs> they walk amongst <laughs> us. <laughs> and it's like, I want to change them. this. Bless mm. them. I want to change this. They're called psychopaths. This. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, uh. <laughs> like, uh, okay, and one of the things that it is, you know, they love and they accept themselves for the, who they are. It's that uncondition- unconditional love and self-regard. Hmm. I love you and I accept you the way you are. I love you and accept you. Hmm. Oh, were you talking to yourself? I was. That's all. Oh, right. oh awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, Speaking about talking to yourself, the yeah. way you speak to yourself, how do you talk to you when you're thriving? And let's just say you make a mistake, right? And compared to when you're surviving and you're making a mistake, you know, when you're surviving, I should have, could have, what's wrong with you? You're so dumb. And then, and then, like, just really like going off on yourself, right? Compared to when you're thriving and you're like, you made a mistake. Mistakes happen. It's okay. You have, if you have a negative emotion, feel it through. You don't have to block it. Let it in. Let it flow. And let's see how we can proceed forward. What are we learning from it? Can we fix it? And how can we go forward? 
And it's really that like speaking and people can to yourself. do that, eh? They walk among yes. us. They walk among us. Huh. You may or may not be speaking to one of them. <laughs> may or may not. Uh, we'll see. We'll I'll see. I'll have to do an autopsy later. With that, and never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, was I, do, I definitely have moments of that. I do. I, I, I just, to live consistently like that, I, I don't. Yet. Yet. I'll be one of them. I'll be walking amongst them soon. Soon. <laughs> You're getting there. You're getting there. They're, they're initiating you into the club. <laughs> oh, good. I hope they buy cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I said, most of the time, you know, you have predominantly positive thoughts. Again, not toxic positivity. When ne negativity is inevitable, it's there. But it's being okay with the negativity and being able to switch out of it. So what's your definition of toxic positivity? The suppression of negativity and negative emotions. It's the saying you're okay when you're not okay because you think it's not okay to say that you're not okay. So it's like... It's, it's, it's almost like surviving, but the exact opposite. You don't have the balance. Mm -hmm. It's like everything is awesome, no matter what. I'm not going to let myself feel negative ever about anything. Mm -hmm. And then you switch because that's not normal. You cannot just be in that state all the time because you're suppressing it. Negative emotions are there for a reason. They speak to you. They're telling you something is wrong. They're not your enemy. They're your friend. And one of my favorite things, especially about dialectical behavioral therapy, there's a notion of the wise mind. You have your emotional mind and then you have your rational mind. But your wise mind is a combination of both. Hmm. So your emotions speak to you and they're telling you something. So the with toxic positivity, you're shunning out a component, a voice, a, a, a form of communication within yourself. And when you suppress it, it's going to come out in one way or, or another. Hmm. And that's you, when it's you, toxic. Uh, and, and you think that does happen? You can't just suppress it forever? Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, those people, they're like, oh, they were so nice, so nice. And then one day they just snapped. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh. There's, a, there's a reason why. And it's like one of the things that I always tell people, I'm like, you need to know your dark side. You need to know what your dark side is. You need to understand your dark side. You need to acknowledge that within you. Light cannot exist without dark. And we all have elements of ourselves and, or, and a certain form of neuroticism. It's just, does that run the show or not? And to deny your darkness is just a denial of your humanity in and of itself. Hmm. So people that are toxic, toxically positive, do they not get into survival mode even when they have to? It's like a lion's chasing me. This is awesome. I, I, I've always wanted to be chased by a lion, you know, or, or will they eventually snap into survival mode and, you know what I mean? Well, if the lion's chasing them, their body's just going to, like, their amygdala's just going to take over. Okay. So there's no, there's no way to override human nature like that or hardwiring. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It, it's just like everything's fine everything's fine everything's fine it's like your body's going like it's not it's not it's not and then suddenly it's like it's oh. not it's not everything just crashes it's not it's not yet <laughs> yeah like bugging you anyway okay Keyword. so that's toxic positivity you know what i instead of toxic positivity i think i prefer negative shaming i don't know why you prefer sorry N exactly. Negative, negative shaming. <laughs> That's a really interesting way to phrase it. Negative shaming. 
Yeah, yeah. That's that's an excellent way of why shame negativity. It's there for a reason. But you just don't necessarily let it run the show. Yeah. In a way that makes more sense than toxic positivity. To me. Negative shaming. To you. And to whomever is listening and feels as though that relates to them as well. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> Send me an email if you like that. <laughs> anyway. Will do. No, I mean so I, the listeners, not you. <laughs> <laughs> you can too. That's fine. <laughs> I hope that they can tell that we're friends. <laughs> 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 so again you know being able to look at the past in peace and being able to look at the future in ease compared to survival where you know there's anxiety with looking at the future and there's depression with looking at the past two completely different perspectives and you know what's crazy about it is that the way your thoughts could impact your body and your surroundings and the way you perceive the world and the opportunities that you end up having because when you're only when you're in survival and you're looking at the negative things and again i'm not shaming anyone i'm not i i want to make it clear that it is not your fault for being in survival it is not your fault whatever you had to go through you have to go through it's usually However, a trauma is, response, isn't it? Usually. Yeah, okay. But it is your responsibility to take care of yourself and to better yourself. And learning this and knowing the difference between the two is your first step forward. Mm-hmm. So, Todd, so you hate negative people is what you're saying? No. No. Because <laughs> that would mean I would have to love them. Oh, right. <laughs> Where there's hate, there's I, love. Where there is hate, there's love. I am neutral. <laughs> as long as they keep their peace, I will keep mine. Or they keep their negativity to themselves. Or I will actually, if I'm working with someone and I know that they're negative, if I have a problem, I will call them and I'll be like, what's that problem? Can you help me figure it out? Because they're negatively um, primed. And you know, what's really interesting is that if you ever feel like you're in that negative thinking, that's a great time for you to edit your work. If it's not really running the show, you know, because you're able to pick up the thoughts when you're in a positive, like super, super positive state of mind. It's harder for you to like nitpick. Mm-hmm. Cognitive this hack. is perfect. Everything's perfect. Yeah. It's great. It's fine. Yeah. Hmm. So, yes. Is that everything? That is. Okay. Because I didn't want to interrupt and make too many smart ass comments to make it. Because then it could have lasted three hours. But anyway, so now we can have a discussion about what we just talked about. Okay, good. Have you, have you ever worked with someone that you were... Like, just so, like, I don't know if I can deal with this person. They're just not getting it. I'm at my wit's end with this person. I wouldn't say necessarily that. I've worked with people. There are some people that are more resistant to change. And I would say there are some people that are more um, lenient or they're, they're just faster. They pick up the pace faster. Uh, but people that come to me in general do want to change. You know, they, they have that initial motivation. It's just some people just tend to have a bit more resistance. They tend to have more blocks. You know, they're, they're just in their own way, but they want to change. So instead of having going through with some, something that I can accomplish with one person throughout, you know, three sessions, I might need seven with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's patience. It's going through the process, and it's it's my job to stay cool, calm, and collected. You know, I'm not frustrated. I it's whatever. I respect you, and I respect your limitations, and I respect your pace. Right. I guess it's like anything else. 
It's like uh, when I worked in addictions, some people had to come back to treatment three or four times before they were really partly willing and to to really do the work. And even for myself, it was like when I first started going to therapy, it was so pointless. I, I was not ready to do any of the work or do any, like I wanted to change. I didn't want to do any of the work. So I guess, I guess everybody is capable of switching from surviving to thriving. It's just depending where they are in their journey at that point. Is that the a most, fair assessment? Y- yes. And I would say the most important thing is, do you want to or do you not? Because the can is there. Can you do it or can you not? You can. But do you think you can? And then second, do you want to or do you not? Because if someone doesn't want to, you can get that all oh, the therapists, coaches, everything. You can get them a whole, you can, you can have them move into a, a treatment facility, retreat, whatever it may be. And they will come out the same person. And that's why I always tell people, you cannot change someone that doesn't want to change. You focus on yourself and you focus on how you can change and what you can change and you make peace with what you cannot. So when we were talking about that notion of like being satisfied and loving and accepting yourself and still wanting to change, You accept the fact that right now, in this present moment, I cannot change this. I cannot change, like, let's just say, where I live or my conditions. But I will accept it and I will plan for the future to change it. But in the present moment, I'm okay with what's happening. Because whether I'm okay with it or whether I'm not okay with it, this is where I'm at. So I might as well be okay. Right. Or, yeah, so accepting it, really. (laughs) Weird. People can do that? (laughs) Yes, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's really really possible for you, you know, to switch from being in survival to being in thrival. It's, it's, and I love seeing people's faces light up when they hear they're like, what I can be balanced. You're telling me that all that hatred can be transformed into love. And just seeing that and seeing that effect and that realization, that hope, that faith come back in and is one of the most beautiful, rewarding things ever. Just you're giving someone that opportunity to explore possibilities because when you're thriving you know like look at the future and you can look at it with endless possibility you can see opportunities you can see expansion you can see beyond the horizon you can think of the maybes and the why nots and the let's see and i can take risks and i can be in that growth zone and i can be a bit more uncomfortable and still be okay. I can be in pain and still be okay. Because growth zones are a bit more, when you're thriving, you're able to get there easily because you're good, you know? It's a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit off, you know, growth isn't easy. However, you know you're okay. You know you'll be okay. Right, you're not uh, catastrophized, Catat- that word that you said okay. earlier. Astrophization. Yeah, you're not doing that no. when you're thinking about stuff. Yeah. Yes. Which is <laughs> which is stuff I've done in the past. And I suppose, does thriving take maintenance? Like, can you become complacent and then kind of regress and start surviving again, and then be like, "Oh shit, I gotta kick myself in the ass to start thriving again." Of course. Of course, again, you know, it's a spectrum. So wherever you're at, you can fall short. And as of everything in this world, you have you practice. You know, so you if don't you're just switching get cured. from one skill to another. No. 
No, unfortunately, there's no magic pill. There is no none of that. It's really, it's, it's effort. It's honest conversations with yourself. It's taking that time. It's understanding. And even if you have that negativity within you and you have that, like, when you're surviving and you have that fear and you have that anxiety, so, like journaling, releasing it, you know, going to therapy, exercising, um, even just spending time in nature. And I know we all hear canoeing, you know, it's, it's, you do it, you push a bit. It's the growth zone. It's going to be a bit uncomfortable. Going outside is going to feel a bit weird and it's going to feel a bit off. And, you know, you're like, why do people do this? And then you work out and you're like, oh my God. Oh, Oh, I'm starting to understand, whatever it may be. So yes, it can go from one end into another. Uh, one of the tips that I will give in terms of switching between the two, and it's actually one of the sessions in my guide, it's practicing extremities. So let's say I have someone that's coming to me and, you know, they, 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 they're, they're in that negative loop and they're only seeing and in terms of their relationship, they're like, you know what, that person hates me. They don't really want to see me. They're not answering my messages. They, they're like, like uh, do they even like me? Like, what did I do? And then I, I, I start to see that loop. And I'm like, okay, now you are thinking in terms of worst case scenario. What is the extreme end of that? What is the best case scenario? And I don't care if you're delusional. Be as delusional as you want to be. What is the best case scenario? That that person loves you, that that person adores you, that that person is just busy, and that's why they're not texting you. And, you know, it's... And then when you do that, you start to create a spectrum of, like, extreme and extreme. And when you have that spectrum, you get to view reality better to see the situation for what it truly is but you can't have that without it's because it's relative right it's mm -hmm. relative so when you have that extreme end of the two you could view it you're like okay well based on previous behavior and how they've spoken to me before and the fact that we've been friends for years chances are they're more likely to love me i'm more likely to be busy I'm more likely and slowly easing that. So you can practice that in terms of when you're in survival and you're like, okay, I'm thinking worst case scenario. Let me think best case scenario. Mm. Mm -hmm. And let's see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Again, back to that hope, back to that possibility, back to that faith, you know, and being able to go well, like scary, maybe man. the future. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Because like terrifying. when I, anytime I'm doing something in the future or I'm thinking about something, some big plans or something, I try to cover all my bases. I try to think of all the worst case scenarios and then be planned for them. So if this happens, then we're going to do this. But if this happens, you know, and I, uh, and then, so then I just get completely overwhelmed with worst case scenarios and that, and, and the thought of like, maybe it'll work out. It's like, but. I have to, it's like, I have to plan for the worst case scenarios just in case, you know, I've, um, uh, it's like, I have high hopes that it's going to work out, but I, I plan for the worst. You plan for the worst. Not always, but like, yeah. <laughs> you can plan for both. That That's the best part about practicing extremities. I'm not going to tell you to not practice for the worst, because if that's, what makes you feel safe and that's what makes you feel safe. But I also want you to right. practice I don't for the practice, best. Right. I don't practice for the best though. Yeah. Practice for the best as well. And then you're like, okay, I have this, I have this. Now that I've practiced for the worst and I know what the worst can happen and I have a contingency plan in case the worst happens, that's it. This thought, this file can, can be shut. I'm going to look at the best case scenario. I'm going to put that out there. 
I'm going to like metaphysically conscientiously raise my frequency into that point of I just want to navigate in that perspective. Like attracts like. I want to go, I want to go in that aspect. Even if I'm a bit delusional, I'm not that delusional because I know what the worst case scenario is. And not only do I know what the worst case scenario is, I have a contingency plan for it. So you're not just venturing into like everything is great. You're like, no, things could go wrong. And there's a reason why your brain tells you that things could go wrong. But isn't that a little delusional too? In what sense? Yeah, like thinking about the worst case scenario. It, you can also be delusional, right? Yeah. In a way, it's like, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to lose everything and my wife's going to leave me and the house will burn down and then uh, I'll be left homeless and stupid. <laughs> the <Catastrophization. laughs> Yeah. Everything, like the world, just like. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It is. So you're practicing the other end of it and then seeing where reality actually stands. Mm. And I always like to say, screw it a bit to the positive. Screw it a bit. Screw what it? do you have to do? Skew it, skew it. <laughs> I know, I know what you said. <laughs> I've, been, I've been speaking in other languages this whole week. <laughs> so we are... Uh, you said it just fine. I'm just being an idiot. Um, uh, so, so there's some stuff you wanna you wanna talk about, like your website and your um, your program. Oh, Real quick. so I would love to slow, like uh, briefly discuss my guide. So, I created a methodology called the Guide to Hacking Your Psyche. It's a master guide towards becoming the best you that you could be. It's based on a cyber humanistic analogy. So if you're into tech, then this is the one for you. The way I like to perceive it is that, you know, you're a walking, talking computer and, you know, your mind is software, your body is hardware and your consciousness is electricity. And we need to check the connectivity between the three. And in order to hack your psyche, you have to be able to understand your psyche because you think in code. So it's a three-part series. The first part is the essentials. It's all about getting to know yourself, getting to understand yourself, and we start to work with the future there. You got to know where you're at to know where to go next. We briefly look at the past just to look at your patterns to understand which ones you want to strengthen and which ones you want to raise. Then we enter the dark series, which is the second part. That is really seeing the darkness within you and learning how to utilize that for the greater good. It's more strategic. It's based on warfare. Uh, meanwhile, the essentials is based on individual and social psychology. And the darkness... And this is actually a survival versus survival is the last session in the dark because then we switch into the light. Oh, and in the dark, it's a lot about boundaries, defending yourself, uh, knowing how to stand your ground. And again, really separating the darkness within you from the darkness that has been inflicted within you. And we have the light, which is the light at the end of the tunnel. It's the embodiment of the light, even in your darkest days. This is where we can venture into the future. We do quantum leaping. We do scripting, embodying, seeing what your preferred, let's say, career path would be or what your preferred life would be. Or, and then we tap into those things and those emotions because those feelings and emotions already exist within you the feelings of relief the feelings of happiness of joy but rather than viewing that as something that's unattainable we create and visualize the scenarios for you to embody it so you can carry it through and actually believe that it's possible because you already feel it that sounds really beautiful i poured everything into this and I hope it helps as many people as, poss as possible. So you hack your psyche and create a new algorithm of thriving. Of thriving, because we are inherently meant to thrive. So I would say that the essentials is, you know, reading your code and troubleshooting it. 
the dark is editing her code, the hacking process, and uh, the light is automating your code and running it, like running and automating your code. So there's a lot of setting up systems in the light and, you know, just taking all that conscious work that's been done in the dark and put and automating it in the light. So for the days, you know, when you were discussing, you're like, you know, what if you regress? And it's like, yeah, that's normal. And that's why there are systems set up in advance, systems of reminders, whether it's physical in your house that you could see, whether it's conversations with people, whatever it may be, for, for it to put you back on track on the days that you just are off. And it's normal. And so we anticipate that and we work with that and we work with you. And, um, but in order for people to, you know, embody that light and like to go through with it, if you haven't done, if you don't know yourself, it's very difficult to do that. Uh, so it really depends on where you're at. Some people want to learn more about, you know, psychological warfare and defending themselves and learning how to implement boundaries and, you know, having that sense of security within themselves. That is uh, the dark series. There is something that I just want to note. I work with people that are relatively functional. So I do not work with, uh, I'm like, this is not therapy. We do not venture, you know, we, we, briefly, we briefly go into the past to understand the future. But for those that, you know, are a bit more, they need more specialized help, mm -hmm. you know, once they go through with it, I will send them to someone else. And once they go through with it, they're more than welcome to come back to proceed forward because the things that we practice, especially with the guide and the methodology, it's, it's cognitively taxing. Mm. And, you know, you, you have to play around with some things in your mind and you need cognitive flexibility. And you're, 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 the best way to describe it, if you have a computer that's, you know, glitching, has like a few viruses here and there, um, I work a lot with social structures as well. You know, like when I discuss, you've seen my, my reels, my TikToks, you know, I discuss like patriarchal programming. I discuss capitalistic programming. I always say these are programming installed within you that it's not inherent to you. That is the computer that's glitching compared to a computer that's shutting down, that has connectivity issues, the hard drive is just, you know, like, they go and they do what they have to do and I will help them if they need help. What type of therapy do you need? Who do you need to see? With absolute pleasure. And when you're ready and you have made peace fully, like not fully, but you have made peace with your past and you're able to look at it without being in distress, then we can work together in terms of the future. So you kind of have to deal with your trauma with someone else. You're not a trauma no, what no. Are, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say. Yes, I know exactly what you're trying to say. So yeah, <laughs> I deal with the future and the embodiment of the future. And with those that have a relative, you know, no one's perfect. And if you need help, you need help. But relative cognitive. Stability. Stability. And you just help them level up. Yes. Yes. Mentally, physically, and metaphysically. The connectivity. Uh, do you, what's your Instagram and stuff if you want people to follow? So uh, I'm actually hosting um, I'm hosting it as an immersive workshop. So I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, but starting uh, July 2022, there will be immersive workshops and we will go through the essentials together and then we'll move on to the dark and we'll move on to the light. And I'm actually, because it's a cyber humanistic analogy and I have a techie side to me and I love Web3 and the NFTs. blockchain worlds and NFTs. Yes. So you would purchase an NFT. I don't even NFT. understand NFTs. I have no idea. I, it's been explained to me 10 times. I've, I still, <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I don't, don't, don't try to explain to me because I, I, I don't even bother. I, I'm going to give you a simple analogy. Someone gives you 
a card and that card gives you access to a conference. That's for an NFT is? For utility, yeah. You could use it as that use. It has multiple uses. And that's all you need to know. I'm even more confused. Yes, this is this is a card. You purchase it. It goes inside your wallet like any other card. And it gives you access. So you can purchase an essential NFT card. You can purchase a dark NFT card. You can purchase a light one. Or you can purchase a black card, which is an all-inclusive service with one-on-one with me. VIP. It's a black card. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you have any social media you want to share? Yes. So you can go, my personal, my personal profile is Dina Aljasasi, D-E-E-N-A-A-L-J-A-S-S-A-S-I. And the guide will be found on uh, Hacked Psyche NFT. Thank you, Dina. <laughs> I like you. You're, you're, I appreciate all the help, all the support and all the explanations and the lives and the podcasts and everything you're doing. Uh, keep up the good work and yeah, love you, buddy. Now, if you're wanting to see a life coach, if you're curious about seeing a life coach, I highly suggest Dina and I highly suggest her immersive workshop and she just gave the information to find it. I'll also put it in the show notes. So check that out. Now, don't forget next week, I'm going to be speaking with Juniper about her last year as a trans woman. It was great catching up with her and, and learning more about the transitioning. So that is next week and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening and please subscribe, rate and review. However, you are listening to this podcast. It only takes a moment and it really helps the show out with getting noticed. This episode has been sponsored by Penny University Bookstore, 3104 13th Avenue. Call 639-571-2186 and check out their online bookstore at pennyu.ca. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network is supported by Conexus. Wellness, however you define it, is achievable. You don't even need to figure it all out by yourself. Talk to Conexus. They'll give you guidance, motivation, and the push you need to reach your goals. They've got you. They're your financial partner and they know you can achieve your very best, your financial best. Prove them right. Start right at Conexus Credit Union. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network is also sponsored by Direct West. Are you a business owner looking for new avenues to promote your business? Direct West digital billboards are a great opportunity to highlight a new product new promotion, or anything else you'd like your customers to know about. You can get local, expert marketing help for your business at directwest.com. If you are having a mental health crisis, please call the Canadian Crisis Number at 1-833-456-4566. In Saskatchewan, the mobile crisis team in Prince Albert is 306-764-1011. In Regina, it's 306 525 Five three three three, and in Saskatoon it's three zero six nine three three six two zero zero. Don't forget to check out my children's book. Sometimes Daddy cries. Sometimes Daddy cries is told through the eyes of a boy whose father suffers from depression. He sees his dad get sad, rest, and even go to the hospital, all while comparing his father's depression to a physical ailment. Available on Amazon.ca. I'll see you next time. This is Todd Redebaum saying, make your beds and take your meds. Bye.